hello everyone today we'll be talking about azure databricks in this session we'll be going to cover what is azure databricks and how informatica has integrated azure databricks and our bdm products this is the agendas of today's presentation where we'll be talking about azure databricks workspaces informatica azure databricks support how to create a cco the cluster provisioning configuration the databricks connection and the live demo before that let's try to understand what is azure databricks the Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark based analytics platform optimized for the Microsoft Azure cloud services. To understand Azure Databricks, we should first understand the services under the Azure Databricks. Here, uh, Azure Databricks service is a native service in an Azure. So each Azure subscription can create a many Azure Databricks services and each services can able to create a link to a single Databricks workspace. So this workspace will be linked to a blob storage which is called as a DBFS, the Databricks workspace. This is how the Microsoft Azure uh, Databricks portal looks like and from here we will be able to create a Databricks clusters and in the live demo session we will see how, how to create a Databricks cluster. Now let's talk about workspace. A Databricks workspace is a main UI for the corresponding Databricks services. Uh, using this UI user can able to manage the users and able to create, update and delete the different types of Databricks clusters. Also able to manage the Databricks notebooks, the DBFS file systems and the libraries which are corresponding to the jobs and the data warehouse. And each workspace can contain the multiple Databricks cluster. So this is how the uh, workspace UI looks like and we'll see in this uh, detail in the live demo. Now let's try to understand how Informatica has integrated Azure Databricks. So Informatica added Databricks as a new execution environment in 10.2.2, added also deploy auto deployment support for the Databricks for the number of use cases. So the supported adapters in using Informatica Databricks are like Azure Blob, Azure Data Lake Storage which will be of ADLS Gen 1 and the Azure SQL Data Warehouse Azure Cosmos DB. The transformation which are supported are Aggregator, the Expressions, Filter, Joiner, Lookup, Normalizer, Rank, Router, Sorter and Union. On 10.2.2 we supported 5.1 Databricks cluster which runs on Spark 2.4. Now let's try to see the demo. So this is how the Microsoft Azure portal looks like. From here, we will be able to create Azure Databricks services by clicking on the Create Azure Databricks service. Once the Azure Databricks service has created, so you can able to log in to the Workspace UI. This is my Workspace UI where uh, if you click on the cluster, you will be having an option to create a clusters. Since I have already created a cluster and it is up and running, I am not going to create a cluster. So if you wanted it, you can able to create a cluster by clicking on Create Clusters. Once you click on the Create Clusters, you have to specify the cluster name. After that, you can select which Spark version you wanted to use it for and there is an option to terminate after 120 minutes. So this is like if you don't use the cluster for more than 120 minutes, so that time it automatically will be get shut down. And these are the sub properties which you can specify it, how many minimum worker nodes you should have and the maximum worker nodes should have. And there is an also option to enable the auto scalable. Like if you enable this, if your job needs more works, worker nodes, the, it will be created by default. Since my cluster is already up and running, so I'm just going to click on this clusters and from here, I'll be going to take uh, three attributes, which is mandatory to create a CCO by using Databricks. So one will be of our domain, Databricks domain, that will be the host of where your Databricks service are up and running. And this is my domain, which will be of my domain host and there will be a cluster ID which will be of this and you can get it from the workspace UI by clicking on the cluster and also you need to generate a token ID which will be of expiry date so which you can able to set it by clicking on accounts and user settings and you have to click on generate a new token ID once you have clicked on the generate a new token ID and you have to give the comment what is the use of this and how many days you wanted this for the lifetime and since I am selected for 90 days I will be going to generate a new 
token id so now i have generated a token id so having these three attributes one is of this token id which will be of this and the second will be of my cluster id the cluster id can be taken from if you click on the cluster from the url you will be able to get the cluster i this is the cluster id and the domain this is the do databricks domain so having these three attributes now we will be able to create a databricks cco to run the mapping on databricks to create a, a azure databricks cloud provisioning you have to click on the domain and you have to go to new connections here you have to select the databricks cloud provisioning and you have to give the name for the databricks cloud provisioning once you are given the name here you have to mention the domain name for the databricks and the databricks token id which you can get it from the databricks workspace so now i have already created the cloud provisioning databricks so now let's try to create a cco for this databricks by clicking on the cco and you have to click on cluster configuration and here you have to enter the cco name once you have entered it you have to select your distribution type which will be of our databricks and you have to click on import from the cluster and here you have to specify the databricks domain and the token id and the cluster id which we have got it from the workspace now i have created the workspace uh, using the workspace details i have created the cco databricks cco this is my databricks cco databricks cco pgn so using this now let's try to run a mapping now i have created a simple mapping from here i'm going to select from the runtime as the execution engine as the databricks and have selected the execution environment as a databricks so now i'm going to run this mapping let's see the output so now my mapping has run successfully and i will be able to see the output um, just going inside the logs and this is how the log looks like from here we will be able to see uh, which has run on databricks park engine and each mapping log will generate a url uh, which is of our workspace and this is where our actual mapping has run so this is the log from the map databricks cluster so where uh, this is my job run id and this the status has got succeeded please write us to the support videos at informatica.com and twitter.com informatica support thank you